Uh, though for loops are very useful, sometimes it's preferable to actually use a vector or a matrix to do the same operation in MATLAB at least, uh, because it is optimized to work with uh, vectors and matrices, and actually using a for loop is going to take more time to complete a task. So let's look at, uh, similar to the example we were looking at previously, uh, what happens if we want to do the same task using a for loop compared to using a vector approach. So let me assign values to x just for simplicity. I'll go f uh, a million values of x for comparison here. Or I'll start small with 10 values of x and we'll increase that. So what I want to do is if I want to take all those values and square them, one method would be to use a for loop. So what I can do is I can say k is going to go, in this case, 10 values long. Or actually even simpler here, I'm going to use uh, a new idea. I'm going to use the length command, length of x. So let me just show you what that does before trying to run this. Right, x we see has 10 values. Length, as the name pretty much implies, tells you how many values are going to be in this vector I call x. Right, so in this case, 10. Uh, and this is good because now, instead of what I call hard coding the value of 10 in here, k is always going to go from 1 into, how, into however many elements x has. And I don't have to retype every time I want to change how many elements x has. This for loop will still work exactly the same. So in this case, when uh, x has 10 elements, the loop is going to go 10 times. So as I did before in the previous example, I'm going to say that the kth value of y is x squared. And for comparison purposes, I do want to time this. So we see here that the time it takes for the 10 elements is very, very small. Now notice right now I did not pre-allocate uh, the values of y. I'm going to compare actually three methods to do the same task, and we can see uh, the differences. So in the second case, I'm going to clear the value I have in for y so that I can compare uh, the two methods here. So in the second case, I'll just put um, I will pre-allocate my value of y as 1, and here again I can use length of x to make sure that y is the correct size. And I need an extra parentheses there. All right, so what I'm doing is for that same size, the same values of x, the first time it goes through I do not pre-allocate but I use a for loop. The second time I go through the same operation but I do uh, pre-allocate the values of y. And we see for the small number of uh, x terms we have, it actually takes longer to do the pre-allocation, but for, uh, usually this is not going to be true. Right, so you see here if I go to a thousand elements in x, uh, going through the first method without pre-allocation is slower than the second method uh, when I do pre-allocate. Right, so we saw this before, the pre-allocation usually for larger um, number of runs of a vector is going to be beneficial. But this is actually an operation uh, that we could have done before without the use of for loops. So we can actually do this with vectors. Much easier. So I can just say that y is x squared. Uh, or x dot squared. I'm going to take every value of x and square it. And I'm going to assign that into y. Uh, so this is what we call vectorization. It doesn't use a for loop, but it's just going to do the same operation. And uh, I'll say now as a, as a warning, not for loops are still useful because we can't necessarily vectorize everything, as we'll see in further examples. But a general rule of thumb is, if you can do something as a vector operation or as a matrix operation, you should do it as that operation because MATLAB will be faster in running it. So let's see for comparison how long it takes for these three methods to make this vector y. Oh, let me suppress that. Right, so we see here that using that third method, this is only for a thousand elements, is much faster than when we do pre-allocate, which is about six times faster than we don't pre-allocate. 
And let me increase the number of values we have in x. I'll go up to a million so we can really see where the, the methods differ. All right, so actually here, pretty much by orders of magnitude, these methods uh, are differing. So without pre-allocation, about 0.7 seconds. With pre-allocation and a for loop, a tenth that amount of time. And using the vector approach, it actually takes a hundredth as much time as the original, or a tenth as much with pre-allocation. And if we were doing uh, kind of a, a larger study here, I can actually assign values to those talks. So I'm going to call this time of one, time of two, and time of three. That way I can save these values and then operate on them to get more exact answers in the end. So what I want to look at is I can look at how much longer does it take when I do not pre-allocate versus when I use a vector approach. And then the same thing here uh, so we can get more exact values out of this. And how much longer does it take even when I do, do pre-allocate uh, compared to when I use the uh, vector approach. So on this particular run, the not pre-allocating took about 60 times as long as the vector approach, and we saw that even with pre-allocating, it still took about six times as long. And we see that for uh, on different times that we run this, for different, um, r different other processes running in the background, uh, that the orders of magnitude are approximately the same from run to run, although the exact values are different. Uh, but then for comparison, this will scale with the size of my uh, vector x. So as, see, as x starts to get smaller and smaller, or fewer and fewer elements, this speed up is not as uh, pronounced. So it's only four times as long when x is only 100 elements, and it's only about one and a half times as long when I do pre-allocate. But the larger I get x, we see that the scale is going to start to get larger and larger. When I increase to 100 million, actually the, the magnitudes are about the same, although it, we do see it's a little bit slower when we don't use the vectorization.